Okay, so today we're going to adjust the valves on overhead engines. This one's going to be a Briggs & Stratton Vanguard we're going to be adjusting the valves on. Uh, not a lot of tools really needed, but some of the tools you may need or some of the things you may need, uh, we'll show you real quick here. No, you're going to need a, a 5.8 spark plug socket to get the spark plugs out. It's a flex head Capri ratchet. If you guys have never seen Capri tools, check them out. Real affordable, real good quality. That's a Aries spark plug socket. I, th I think there's a set of four or six. It was like 20 bucks, real, real reasonable. You're going to need a, on, depending on your engine, your, your model number, serial number, but you're going to need a five, mil five millimeter hexed. Doesn't have to be on a socket. You can use a T handle or an Allen wrench. Uh, some of the Briggs and Stratton's and some other engines, you might need the Torx. So just kind of know ahead of time if you can so you got the right tools most of the times it's a 10 millimeter to pull the valve covers off the, these wrenches work real good for for adjusting the valves 12 millimeter offsets you don't need a super good brand it's just not a lot of torque applied to it sometimes you need a pry bar just to get underneath the valve covers other times they pop right off Sometimes you can just give them a light whack with a light hammer or a piece of wood and they'll pop off too. It all depends. Um, you may need a scraper to get the gasket off or it may come right off and be reusable. You may need to replace it. That's what we got here. Replaceable gaskets. And then these washers with the rubber seal on them for the top of the valve covers. Sometimes the gasket and these rubber seals are, are reusable. Other times they're not. We always have a bunch on hand because it's 50-50 if the gasket comes off in one piece. Uh, if you don't have a gasket, you can always use RTV silicone and uh, do it that, that way, but it's kind of a messy way to do it. Not the right way, but it'll get you out of a jam. There's not a lot of oil under there, not a lot of pressure, so um, just a good seal helps. These are really handy. These are from Lane Tools. They're feeler gauge holders. So this one's got to be on it for the Briggs & Stratton Vanguards. We do a lot of these. We set them at six thousandths. We figure the valves are a little better loose and tight. Um, I think the book calls for five, five or six, or between four and six, but we set them at six. This is another laying tool, which is real handy. This one's set up for our own ends. Um, so you do the, the blue is your intake side, and you put your red feeler gauge for your exhaust. It makes it handy. And uh, this little this little tool, you, you, you can use a pencil, a piece of wood, anything. So the Briggs & Stratton, you need to get it at top dead center of your compression stroke. And then it has to go down a quarter inch to get past the decompression valve. So that's what we got that little blue dot on there for. So if you, if you see, it's going to be a little tough on the camera here, but this thing wants to cooperate. So right about here on that indentation is top dead center and then the blue dot here is is a quarter inch past just because we do so many of them we got the setup you can do it with anything so here is top dead center on, on most of them depending on the on the engine of course but this is set up for the 16 uh, horsepower Briggs we do a lot of and then here's your quarter inch past that so just bring your engine to top dead center and then roll it over till it drops the piston drops down a quarter inch past that top dead center. So however you want to figure it out or measure it or, or feel it or, or kind of eyeball it. Um, it's not not precise precise, but you got to get at least a quarter inch past. So these are just the basic basic tools you're gonna need to get it done. And you're you can any feeler gauge works. Any set of hex or T handle or Allen wrenches. Um, you can get by with with some other wrenches and stuff but these offsets really do make a big difference and i will show you how to do it next thing you're going to remember when doing valves any valves adjusting them the engine has to be cold not run not warm but the engine has to be cold otherwise you won't get accurate readings metal expands then it's inaccurate so always adjust your valves when they're cold okay so now we're going to show you how to adjust the valves on a briggs and stratton vanguard overhead engine overhead valve this will go for many different brands and models Laws or overhead valves is kind of how you do it. Same principles. The Briggs Stratton Intex are the same way. These are 10 millimeter. And if you notice, there's these little washers underneath here. They got rubber around them. Sometimes this whole thing will pop off. 
other most of the time though you got to get behind these and either pop them off or they'll unthread because they're rubber and they'll just turn right off here if they're real loose and been on and off a bunch of times you can usually just walk them off we've got new ones so we're not too worried about damaging them if you don't have new ones probably better off trying to unthread them but these got to come off first before you try to pull this cover off most of the time unless these are really worn if that's the case they're not doing anything but you see they'll just unthread off too sometimes you got to whack this with a, a, a rubber hammer real lightly or get underneath with a pry bar or a screwdriver depending on how hard they are so if you see the gasket just fell off that's why we tell you to have a gasket on hand here's half of it and the other half's on the floor and part of it's up here So we got a gasket scraper, we'll scrape this off. When you're taking this, try not to get the pieces in the engine if you can help it. We'll have to use a scraper. We'll scraper on that too. And you want to take your spark plugs out. And so take your spark plugs out, both of them out. These ones use 5 eighths. When you adjust the valves, most of the time you're doing the engine tune-up at the same time. So we'll be replacing these spark plugs with new ones. Now's a good time to inspect your spark plugs, see how the engine's running. This one's probably a little bit rich, but it's got 1,200 hours on it. So it's not perfect, but that's not bad. All right, so this is where you do your valve adjusting here. Your hex allen wrench goes inside, and then you're going to use your, your 12 millimeter on the outside here. And then that's how you adjust, and we'll show you that in a second. Turn your PTO on. You got a safety switch, so you wouldn't be able to start it. But turn your PTO on. If you got a belt on here, take your belt off. You can hear it. Your PTO turning on. Turn your PTO on. We've got our stick marked because we do this all the time, so it just makes it a lot easier. So this is going to be the top dead center mark. I explained that wrong in the beginning, but this is top dead center mark. This is quarter past. Okay. So and it's going to line up on here. Whatever you need to do to just find top dead center and go down a quarter inch, but this just makes it easy for us. All right, so we're turning the front counterclockwise. You're gonna watch your valves. We'll go through it. Here's your intake. Okay, four strokes is compression right now. It's gonna be power. You're gonna watch your exhaust is opening up now. Your exhaust stroke. You wanna be in the compression. So now we're on the exhaust. The exhaust valve is closing. The intake valve is gonna open now. So this is your intake stroke. You don't want to put this in yet watch the intake valve when the intake valve is all the way up here that means it's closed right now it's closed now you're on your compression stroke the pistons gonna be coming up towards you so stick this in or your whatever you're using bring and bring it up you'll feel it come up with the piston right now you can see this mark here that's what you're, we're watching it's coming up okay there's our blue mark that's top dead center. I don't know if you can see it or not, but the blue mark is lined up this heat tin. The next mark we're paying attention to is right here. This top of this little indent. Okay, that's a quarter inch past here. That means we're past the decompression stage, and that's where you need to be to adjust the valves. So we're going to keep turning this counterclockwise. Watch it go down, and then hopefully you can see that. So now this is lined up here. It's a quarter inch past this blue mark, which was top dead center. You can kind of eyeball it. You can just stick something in there, feel it, a piece of a pencil or wire, or you can kind of turn the, the pulley quite a little bit. And, and all you're trying to do is get past that quarter inch and, and get, get you past the decompression valve. And that's where you measure these. So on this Briggs and Stratton, it calls for four to six thousandths. We go to the higher end. Loose valves are better than tight in our opinion. And where you measure is going to be right under here between the valve and the other end of this rocker. So this one's super loose. That six sliding right in there, no problem. You can you can hear it and feel it. So I'm going to guess that's probably closer to ten thousandths. Okay, so you're going to take your 13 millimeter wrench, 
these offsets work really good. You can use a regular wrench sometimes, it's just a little more tricky. And then you're going to take your 5 millimeter hex Allen. You don't necessarily need it on a socket. You can use a T-handle or a L-handle Allen wrench. But you want to loosen that jam nut up. You can see that just a little bit. Again, hold the center with the Allen. And then loosen the jam nut up. Just a little bit. All right. And then we're going to get our feeler gauge ready. And what you're going to do is turn the center Allen for your adjustment. So if you need to tighten the valves up, you're going to turn this in. That's probably a little too much. Yep, so you see the gauge doesn't fit now. A little bit goes a long way. It's close, but it's off a little bit. Back it off to you. You can get this gauge to slide in there with just a little resistance like that. If you see that, it's dragging. You don't want that bottom spring to get pushed down, though, when you put that in. So you need to pay attention that you're not forcing this. Because these Briggs and Stratton springs are not super strong. You want this to go in with a little drag. When you do your final adjustment, you want to take your Allen out of there because it does affect with your pressure. So right there, I've got a little bit of drag. And it's a six thousandths. That's just about where you want to be. When you tighten these down, some people leave these in here. You can do that. It's not the best thing for the feeler gauges. So to tighten it, you need to be pretty precise on what you're doing here. Again, you want your 13 millimeter on there. And then the key is holding the center Allen hex while you turn this. Because this is not going to address it. This is just jamming it, locking it in. The If the center moves a little bit, you're going to change your adjustment. It can get tricky. So that one kind of loosened up as we did that. So just back it off. Back your nut off there. Yep, so we just want to get that a little tighter. So there I've got some resistance. It's holding the gauge. Again, you want to hold your jam nut steady, hold this steady. And kind of hold them against each other if that makes sense. You, you want your ratchet to fight your wrench. That way they don't move. There we go. And this one again was loose. And we'll do the same thing. You're better off being a little loose than a little tight if you got to find a happy medium. If you got if you got the T-handles, you can do the same thing. It's a little easier to fine-tune adjust them, but not necessarily to tighten them up. So right now, i got a little bit of drag. You can see that. It's about where you want to be. Again, take your wrench. Try not to spin anything. You can hold hold this with your T-handle. And you want to put a little force against the way you're turning. Just snug them up. They don't have to be super tight. Yeah, that one needs to get a little tighter. So, again, we'll back this off. I mean, it would run. It would be fine. But if you want to be precise, turn it a little bit more. There we go. That's better. Slight drag on there. It's not pushing the spring. It's not lifting the rocker. Just a little bit of drag. That's how you do the adjustment there. And then what you want to do is take your scraper, take your gasket off here, clean this up real good. I probably should have mentioned blow the engine off completely before you open it up like this. Get all the dust and the dirt and any anything that's hanging around. Blow out in here before you take the spark plug out. You don't want anything falling in there. So a couple things we do. We took the gasket to clean this up. We got Q-tips. We'll take any pieces of gasket material out that might have fell in on scrapings. Uh, when we're tuning them up, we change the oil last. So if anything does get down in there, it comes out with the dirty oil. Clean this up real good. Set your new gasket on. 
and then either reuse these or put your new ones on. We've got new ones and new gasket for this machine. And then the other thing is if you had to clean up in here with a little bit of brake clean, and anyways, make sure, um, we do it anyways, but make sure you got clean, fresh oil, your container's clean. Because obviously what you're putting on here is unfiltered, but it came out of a jug in this little container. And then uh, just coat these back up if you happen to clean them up or spray them down with brake clean for any reason. And you do this on both sides. Same thing, you can't go over there until you get that side on top dead center. You can't go over and adjust the valves with this piston being where it is. You need to go through the strokes and find yourself top dead center on compression again with there and drop it a quarter inch. So you need to repeat the same exact process on this side over there, including spinning the motor over. There's not a lot to it. It's pretty simple. It's very important. And uh, it doesn't matter if you got a Briggs or an Onan or a Kohler or whatever you got. Big engines, big diesel trucks, everything. Keeping the valves adjusted makes a big difference on the way it runs, the way it performs. Longevity of the engine as well. It's a pretty simple task and it goes a long way for payback. We'll dress this all up, put it back, and that's going to be that. You don't need to watch us put gaskets on. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like and subscribe. It helps others find the video and it helps us. We realize, as should you, that there is more than one way to do things. This is how we do it and it works for us. But we are always open to new ideas and new things. We are making these videos to help those wanting to learn and or wanting to do more repair work themselves. Some videos are also instructions for parts and kits that we offer. Keep in mind many of the tractors seen in the video are, are customers' tractors. As much as we would like to repair all the things that are needed or were you repaired poorly by someone else, we cannot and have to repair only what is being asked for or can be afforded by the customers. Remember, always follow safety procedures and use safety equipment and safe practices. For video purposes only, we may not always do so to present a clear picture or a clear video and to convey what we're trying to convey to you. Safety is up to you and safety is no accident, as our old shop teachers would say. Be sure to find us on Facebook at K-Singer Salt Tractors Northeast and follow us on Instagram at the same. Again, thanks so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Be safe out there. And remember, man built it, man can fix it.